The movie opens with a girl staring at a boy in the subway. The girl's name's Ninako, and she has a massive crush on the most popular boy in the school, Ren. On the last day of class before summer vacation, Ninako is determined to confess her love to Ren. She wants to confess to him so she can move on when he rejects her. It's not the first time a girl confesses to him. But Ninako is different. She's an energetic girl who is always smiling, the opposite of Ren. He's serious, quiet, and barely smiles. Her crush started when Ren accidentally bumped into her, breaking her cell phone charm. Feeling sorry for his mistake, he gave Ninako a new one. For some reason, the fact that he cared enough to buy a new charm for her made Ninako notice Ren for the first time. From that day on, her crush flourished, to the point he was all she could think about. The issue is that Ren has a girlfriend, a beautiful older girl named Mayuka. They have been dating for a year before Ren meets Nanako. Nanako knows Ren won't break up with his girlfriend for her. After all, Mayuka not only is more experienced, but she's also a model. Nanako feels bad about her feelings for Ren, but there's nothing she can do to change it. He's her first love. She decides, then, that if she can't have him as a boyfriend, she wants to be his friend. But first, she needs to know for sure he doesn't like her back. After her confession, Ninako tries to go back to her normal life. During summer vacation, she didn't see Ren at all, so it was easy to forget him. Back at the school, though, she discovers her feelings are very much alive, as soon as she sees Ren again. An annoying boy from her classroom, Takumi, announces to everyone in class that he saw Ninako confessing and being rejected by Ren. Ninako's embarrassed, and Ren feels bad for her. She doesn't deserve to be made fun of because of her feelings. When classes are over, Ren and Ninako talk for the first time since her confession. Ren hopes there are no hard feelings, and Ninako doesn't express any antipathy towards him, to his relief. After rejecting so many girls at school, there's a club of rejects who despise him, and he feared Ninako would become one of them. Ninako isn't the kind of girl to resent someone or treat them badly. When the girls Ren rejected try to get Ninako into their group, she refuses. She has no hard feelings for him. The girls turn their bitterness to Ninako, and start bullying her because she refused to be part of them. Takumi sees Ninako defending Ren and feels bad for her. He was Ren's closest friend back in middle school, but they had a fallout. He knows the effect Ren has on people, and it isn't fair to Ninako. Ren is walking by right at that moment, and Takumi informs him that Ninako is defending him. Ren is shocked. The next day, there's voting to see who the new class leaders will be. Ren and Ninako are chosen. Takumi, who has taken an interest in Ninako, volunteers too. Later that day, they go out to buy things for the school event. During their shopping, Mayuka shows up, much to Ninako's anxiety. She's forced to watch Ren with Mayuka being cute and romantic with each other. It's painful, but Ninako puts on a fake smile. Takumi is the only one to notice something is wrong. It's ridiculous how oblivious Ren is. Tired of watching Ninako's sadness, Takumi comes up with an excuse for Ren and runs away with Ninako. Ninako is glad that she escaped and thanks Takumi for his quick thinking. She confides in him that she knew Ren would never choose her, but it's still hard to watch him with another girl. Takumi understands. He admires Ninako for not holding it against Ren and for treating him normally. She's very strong. Unbeknownst to them, Ren wasn't too happy with Takumi taking Nanako away. The next day, he confronts Takumi, accusing him of using Nanako as a way of getting revenge on Ren. In middle school, when they were friends, Takumi's girlfriend cheated on him with Ren. Takumi never forgave Ren for his alleged betrayal, but he never confronted him either. So Ren has no clue why Takumi stopped being his friend. Takumi is known for being a ladies' man, and Ren is worried he'll use Nanako. Takumi scoffs in disbelief that Ren of all people is worried for Nanako. He wonders why he's so worried about her, especially after rejecting her feelings. Ren doesn't know what to say to him. Later on, Nanako and Ren meet again at the subway station. As they wait for the train to arrive, Nanako offers Ren some chocolate. She's surprised when he accepts, boys not normally liking sweets. She explains to Ren that she dreams of one day having a boyfriend who she could share sweets with. Ren finds her dream cute. He loves sweets, but with Mayuka being a model, they never eat sweets together on dates. The mention of Mayuka makes Nanako's heart clench painfully in her chest, even as she smiles at him. In her mind, it's obvious Ren loves Mayuka very much. As the days go by, Nanako finds out that Mayuka's father is remarrying, and she isn't happy about it. Ren keeps doing everything in his power to make her happy, and even Mayuka's brother, Nanako's classmate, thinks he's overdoing it. He started working multiple part-time jobs to pay for dinners and outings with her, all to make her happy. With his mind so busy with Mayuka, Nanako barely speaks to him anymore. She's worried about his health, but she knows it's not her place to say anything. Still, she misses him deeply. Ren is tired and sleepy as he goes to school. He's taking care of Mayuka as if he's an adult, not a teenage boy. For the first time in their relationship, their age difference is an issue. Mayuka already works in an adult world. Ren's still at school, learning how to grow up. One day, Ninako decides to compliment him for his hard work. 
Ren's thankful to be acknowledged. It's not that Mayuka doesn't care about him, but she tends toward being self-absorbed. She has no clue Ren's overworking himself just to make her happy. All she thinks about is how angry she's that her father is marrying again. After Ren leaves, Nanako loses her smile. It hurts so much to compliment him for being a good boyfriend to Mayuka. The only one who seems to notice her constant sadness is Takumi. He's romantically interested in Nanako, and he wants to show her that she can forget Ren. Thinking about her feelings, he advises Nanako to move on from Ren. Nanako gets upset at him for interfering in something that is none of his business. Later that day, when he's returning from school, Ren collapses at the subway station. He's so tired that his body can't take it anymore. As he passes out, he remembers when Mayuka told him she was afraid to be alone someday. Ren can't see her sad and depressed, so he promises her that he will always stay by her side. It's a promise that comes at a cost to him. When Ren wakes up again, he's in a hospital, and Nanako is taking care of him. He wonders if she has been following him, and she says that she was worried about him and his health. Ren is touched by her selfless act. Nanako is there for him without him even asking her to be. Feeling comfortable in her presence, Ren confides in her that he feels useless. He tried so hard to take care of Mayuka, but in the end, he can't. Nanako disagrees with him. She firmly believes that what he's doing is a great show of how caring and selfless he is. Ren is insecure about his relationship with Mayuka, so it's good to hear a friend say he's doing well. Later on, as they go back home, Nanako falls asleep on Ren's shoulder, and he admires her. She's embarrassed when she wakes again, but Ren reassures her it's alright. Nanako wants to walk him home, worried that he will collapse again, and Ren refuses. They part ways, but Nanako still feels as if something is missing. She goes running after Ren, tripping on the stairs and falling into his arms. Before she can move away, though, Ren holds her close to him. Ren feels bad for the way his heart is beating fast in his chest for another girl. He remembers Mayuka and quickly leaves. Nanako wants to cry as she watches him go. The way he looked so embarrassed is a painful reminder that they aren't meant to be together. He already has someone else waiting for him. Nanako is frustrated with herself, and the constant hope she feels whenever he gives her a little bit of attention. She needs to stop deluding herself that Ren will someday be there for her. With her decision made, when she's back at home, Nanako takes the charm Ren gave her off of her phone. Moving on, while Ren is working a lot and giving his best to support Mayuka, she spends most of her time working. She's so focused on her career as a model that she has no idea what Ren is going through for her. He isn't her priority anymore, something she has come to realize. Mayuka, much like Ren, is confused about their relationship. She feels as if they are worlds apart, she already works and has a car and a career, while Ren is just a kid. She is feeling guilty, but at the same time, she's afraid of losing him. A few days later, Takumi apologizes to Nanako for meddling in her business, but she isn't upset anymore. In retrospect, she realized he was only looking out for her, and she's thankful. Takumi takes this chance to get closer to Nanako, he invites her to watch the fireworks festival with him, and she agrees. On the day of the festival, he goes to Ren's place of work to warn him that he's in love with Nanako, and that he won't go down without a fight. Ren would never admit it, but he's jealous. Before they can talk more, Nanako, looking cute in her traditional clothes, shows up. She's confused when she sees Ren, having no idea he worked there, but before she can say anything to him, Takumi takes her away. Ren has to watch as she leaves with his former best friend, not understanding why he feels so sad. In the meantime, Mayuka is networking and having fun at her job. Nanako has a lot of fun with Takumi, though she doesn't see him romantically. Takumi is funny and easy to talk to. Their date is going well until a girl from Takumi's past shows up. It's the same girl who cheated on him with Ren, Mao. As soon as he sees her, his good mood sours. She wonders if Nanako is his girlfriend, and Nanako denies it. Takumi is mad at the girl for talking to him as if they are friends. He still holds a grudge against her for everything she made him go through. He loved her when they dated, but she was only with him because he was Ren's friend. Her deceit is unforgivable to Takumi. Nanako is surprised to see Takumi so angry at someone. It's not like him to be bitter and angry. When he storms off, she quickly goes after him, confused by his behavior. Takumi confides in her that she was his girlfriend, and apologizes for blowing up. Nanako finally understands why he's feeling so bad. She doesn't judge him for his reaction. In her opinion, it only shows his passion, and how important Mao was to him. Takumi looks sad, seeing Mao brought up the same depressing feelings he had when they broke up. He feels useless for not being able to make his girlfriend love him. He also blames Ren, even though it wasn't his fault. At that moment, Nanako feels a deep kinship with Takumi. Like her, he goes through his days with a smile on his face, pretending that he isn't hurting inside. As fireworks start blowing colorfully in the sky, Takumi hugs Nanako and whispers that he loves her. Nanako's speechless. At first, she thinks he's joking, but Takumi promises he will make her love him back. 
He knows that she holds Ren close to her heart, though he's sure one day she will get tired of waiting for him. Takumi's hopeful that when the moment comes, she will turn to him. He leaves Nanako alone, thinking about her choices. In a moment of self-pity, she wonders how hard it would be to forget Ren and move on with Takumi. She's so tired of watching Ren from a distance, yet she can't let go of him. To make things worse, as she walks by Ren's workplace, she watches him with Mayuka through the window. He's smiling at her as if she's the most important person in the world to him. Nanako's heart falls to pieces, and she starts crying. As she looks back at Ren and Mayuka, he's staring at her too. When Mayuka notices his focus is not on her anymore, she turns around and sees Nanako. She looks back and forth between them, and a bitter realization dawns upon her. She may no longer be the sole occupant of Ren's heart. The following day, Ren and Mayuka meet again, at the same place where they met for the first time. There, Mayuka informs Ren that they need to break up. The night before, she realized that not only was she hindering Ren's growth, but he also loves someone else. She admits she wishes they could grow old together someday, but it isn't meant to be. They reached a crossroads and didn't choose the same path to follow. Mayuka wants to focus on her modeling career, and Ren still has a whole future ahead of him. If he stays with her, he will follow her everywhere, and that's not good for him. Ren feels awful that he's breaking his promise to her, but at the same time, breaking up is a relief. Now, he has to figure out who he is without Mayuka. The next day at school, Nanako notices Ren looks sad. She isn't sure if she should talk to him, not after her resolution to forget about him. The girl from the day before, Mao, suddenly shows up, asking Nanako if she has feelings for Ren. Nanako is confused about why the girl is asking her that, and doesn't answer. Takumi sees the two of them together and quickly intervenes. Knowing Mao, he believes she's trying to manipulate Nanako, and he won't allow her. Mao asks if Takumi has feelings for Nanako, and he ignores her. The gossip at the school is that Ren broke up with his girlfriend. Nanako's friends wonder if she'll make a move on him, but she denies it. She knows Ren must be feeling sad, after breaking up with someone so important to him. Her friends think that if she doesn't make a move on him, he will find someone else. Nanako understands, yet she still thinks about Ren's feelings. A few days later, they go on a school trip. Nanako still hasn't talked to Ren, giving him space and time. Ren notices her distance, but he isn't ready to move on yet. During the trip, Nanako gets lost, and Ren's the one to find her. Before she reaches him, she trips and falls into a puddle, making a mess of her shirt. Ever the gentleman, Ren offers his sweatshirt to her, despite feeling cold. When Nanako goes to wash her hands, Ren shows up behind her to help her with the sleeves. Nanako's heart almost leaps out of her chest, feeling him so close to her. To break the tension, Nanako says he acts like a mother, making Ren laugh. As they wait for their friends to show up, Ren confesses to her that he and Mayuka broke up. He still blames himself for it, thinking that it was his selfishness that pushed her away. Nanako strongly disagrees with him. She knows Ren was working so hard for Mayuka that he got sick. For her, there's no one more kind than Ren. Ren feels better with her heartfelt compliment, and he thanks her. Takumi shows up, interrupting their moment alone. He notices Nanako is wearing Ren's sweatshirt, and tries not to show how much it bothers him. Ren's tense in their presence, believing they are dating after they went to the fireworks festival together. He comes up with an excuse and leaves the two of them alone. For the rest of the day, though, he can't stop staring at Nanako, noticing how cute she is when she smiles or laughs. It dawns on him that Mayuka was right. He has feelings for Nanako. After the school trip, Ren meets Mayuka again, to give her things back to her. He admits that she had been right about his feelings changing, and that he understands it now. He thanks her for their time together, and finally says goodbye. This time for good. Mayuka watches him leave with a bittersweet smile, knowing that he will forever be her first love. The following day, Ren and Nanako go home together. As they talk for a long time, Ren notices that they have a lot in common. Days go by, and they get closer. Nanako goes back to using the charm Ren gave her, feeling hopeful that she may have a chance with him. One day, Mao watches the two of them together, and decides she doesn't want Nanako with Ren. She politely asks Nanako to not get close to Ren. She explains that back in middle school, she was the culprit of Ren and Takumi's fallout. It dawns on her that Ren is the friend Mao cheated on Takumi with. Mao doesn't want the same to happen again, and she believes Nanako has to distance herself from Ren. Nanako feels guilty after talking to Mao. She knows Takumi likes her, and he's her good friend. She doesn't want him to suffer again, if she starts dating Ren. As she always does, Nanako puts Takumi's feelings ahead of herself, and decides to pretend she doesn't like Ren anymore. What the girls don't know is that Takumi saw them talking, and he knows Mao can be cunning. A few days later, as they prepare for the school festival, Nanako looks sad, and Takumi notices. Her friends also realize that Nanako hasn't been talking about Ren as usual. Nanako pretends it's nothing, and that she's fine, but even Ren can see she isn't as bright and energetic as usual. When she's alone with him, he asks if she's alright, and she confirms she is. He can tell she's lying. Quietly, Ren confesses to her that he will worry about her. Nanako promises she is fine. What Mao said is still present in her mind, and she decides to ask Ren about it. 
Ren explains to her that in middle school, he was quiet and introspective. Takumi was the only one to talk to him, and they became fast friends. Ren still misses Takumi's friendship, because it was unique to him, but he understands why Takumi distanced himself. That piece of information is enough to consolidate what Mao said. Nanako realizes that she can't be with Ren without hurting Takumi in the process. Unbeknownst to them, Takumi watches the two of them interacting with a pang in his heart. After Nanako leaves, Ren approaches Takumi and confesses he likes Nanako. He wants to be clear with him before he makes his move. Takumi is shocked, though deep down, he already knew that this moment would come. It was obvious Ren liked Nanako from the beginning. He just refused to admit it. Moving on, Nanako is very confused about her feelings. She finally has a chance with Ren, but she's afraid of losing Takumi as a friend. He's important to her too, and he stood by her as she suffered from loving Ren. To make things worse, after school, Takumi asks Nanako what he can do to be loved by her. She doesn't say anything, simply because she doesn't know. It's the first time she ever liked someone, and she has never dated anyone. She has no clue how to deal with all these feelings inside her. During the school festival, Ninako spends a lot of time with Ren. Neither one of them knows how to act. Ren wants Ninako to open up to him, to trust him as he trusts her. He has no clue that her sudden depression is because of him, and her conflicted feelings. When it becomes too much, Ninako runs away from him, trying hard not to confess her feelings for him again. Meanwhile, Takumi saves Mao from a group of bullies, even though he treats her badly. He admits to her that their past relationship made him realize that he gave up too early. He should have tried harder. Now, he wants to pursue Nanako with all he has. Before he leaves, Mao confesses that she told Nanako about her role in breaking up Takumi's friendship with Ren. Takumi is mad at her, before she explains that she only said it to give Takumi a chance. She is in love with him, and wants to give him a chance to be happy with Nanako. She also admits that Ren never kissed her back, as a matter of fact, he pushed her away. After her confession and apology, Takumi forgives her. He can sympathize with her plight of trying to make the person she loved, love her back. Back to Ren and Nanako, he looks for her everywhere after she stormed away from him. When he finally finds her, he confesses his love to her. He's moved on from Mayuka, and now he's ready to be with Nanako once and for all. Nanako tries to leave without an answer, afraid she's going to break her promise to herself of not getting between him and Takumi. Ren doesn't allow her to leave. He wants to hear her answer. Nanako explodes, feeling angry at herself and Ren. After so long loving him in silence, she can't believe he loves her back, and there's nothing she can do about it. Ren apologizes for forcing her to answer, and leaves her with his head hanging low. Nanako is so sad and heartbroken, she starts crying. Takumi sees Ren leaving, and questions why he looks so sad. He soon realizes that it's something to do with Nanako, and feels he must make things clear between them. He runs to Nanako to explain to her that his situation with Ren and Mao has nothing to do with her. She doesn't need to feel sorry for him. He knows she loves Ren, but he still wants an answer from her. He suddenly kisses her, and Nanako pushes him away. When he asks her to go out with him, she almost slaps him for his imprudence. It dawns on her, though, that Takumi is being obnoxious on purpose. He wants Nanako to hate him, so she can move on with Ren. Nanako feels sorry for Takumi, because more than anyone, she knows exactly how he feels. It's even worse because the last thing she wants is for him to suffer. Takumi knows how selfless Nanako is, a trait she shares with Ren, and he knows he has to push for her to do something about her feelings. He knew he didn't have a chance with her, not while Ren was in the picture. Nanako finally decides to do what her heart is telling her to. She runs after Ren, while Takumi watches and cries. Mao sees Nanako running, and goes after Takumi to comfort him. Nanako runs until she catches up to Ren at the subway station. Meanwhile, Ren is sad and morose, remembering his favorite moments with Nanako. When Nanako arrives at the subway station, the train has already left. Luckily for her, Ren decided to wait. She runs towards him and starts crying. She explains that she didn't accept his feelings before because someone would be hurt. But now she understands that sometimes, she has to put herself before others. She wants to be with him, to date him, and see him every day. She loves him. Ren can barely hold himself back from grinning. It's a relief to hear that he still has a chance. He hugs Nanako, and whispers that he loves her too. Nanako can finally feel him in her arms, and it's the best feeling in the world. 